traders, investors, stock market enthusiasts, my friends from around the world. Welcome to probably one of the most highly anticipated, keenly awaited videos I think I've ever made entitled, What is the S-Curve? Now, this particular video and the concepts within it are just kind of like one of my brainchilds. The nomenclatures and the names and the titles, that's just really garbage, more or less. You can call this stuff whatever you want. We're gonna be discussing the principles of wave structure and specifically how and where to buy and more importantly, knowing why to do that. It's gonna be an exceptional video. You're gonna absolutely love it. Thank you so much for being a part of Real Life Trading, for being a part of the family and for helping us with our mission to enrich lives. So let's dive into another entirely free video that's absolutely revolutionary and game changing. You rock. All right, traders from around the world, welcome to a video that I do hope helps you immensely with your market timing. Because trading is all about timing. All about your entries and your stops and how long you hold. Now, as I mentioned in the previous little quick intro, this is just kind of my terminology, the S-curve. I felt like it was pretty simple to remember. People get it, they'll kind of understand what it means. There's a lot of other terms out there for things that are similar, like J-hook. That's the only other one that I know of that has a similar terminology. Uh, and it's also comprised with an English letter from the alphabet. But the biggest takeaway, hopefully from this video and this recording that you will have, and you're welcome to watch it as many times as you want, but hopefully the biggest takeaway will be to enter earlier. A lot of traders really struggle with entering um, at places that are way too obvious. And when I say enter earlier, that means for bullish trades, that means for bearish trades, you're gonna to wanna to get in at better prices. Many traders wait too long. And I have another video called why I do not like the term confirmation. So many traders wait for confirmation. They wait for confirmation. They wait for the stocks to say, this is what I'm doing for sure. And the problem is when they get into that trade, after they've waited for it, you know, after they've waited for it to really finally tell them what it's going to do, it is too late. And then if they do get in and the trade is confirmed for them at that particular point in time, if the trade goes against them, they're going to get all upset or they'll get more upset because they just can't figure out why it didn't work. Especially if you're an engineer, scientist or mathematician or lawyer, chemist, teacher, if one plus one equals X, then it should be that way all the time. So if you're looking for something called confirmation, confirmation does not exist in the stock market, any stock market, the US markets, Hong Kong exchange, the German markets, European markets, London stock exchange, it just doesn't exist. The only thing you can get confirmation on is the trend. And this is, again, my opinion, because even in using this particular term, if you're going to use the word confirmation, it should be on the trend. And the crazy part is, even that will end at some point for some period in time. So even if you say you have a bullish trend and like you go, yep, this is absolutely a confirmed bullish trend, unquestionable. At some point that bullish trend will revert. It will change. Its momentum will shift. And this S curve pattern is so powerful in helping you trade because it introduces uh, fractalization, fractalization into your time frames. Um, into your trading and it teaches you and helps you trade without confirmation. You're getting in earlier because it's what you're supposed to do. 
It is uh, a natural wave. And this video is comprised of so many different theories. It's truly, uh, it took a good year and a half for me to think about how I wanna get this point to come across. Because it's not like I just can't make a video, right? I can make a video about anything. I want it to be a good video. I want it to be something that people take away from it and they think to themselves, this is the greatest thing ever and it really helps them for that period of time. And then we learn something and grow on top of that foundation. So the term uh, fractalization means this is gonna work on any time frame, just not all the time. Everything works. Everything works in the market, just not all the time. This will help you get better with your timing. This will help you enter earlier and this will help you in, get into trades without confirmation. But the S curve um, really comprises, comprises Elliott wave theory, uh, Elliott wave theory and Fibonacci ratios as well. Um, both of those are gonna comprise the S curve a lot. Uh, the also the buy low, sell high, that is going to be part, uh, part of this also. You can have and you can use, as you can see on my screen, you can use moving averages to help and assist uh, in your timing with the S-curve. But this is just my terminology to my knowledge. And the reason it is is because it does look a little bit like an S. So if I draw a perfect S on the screen, it's not even perfect. But if I take that and just move it diagonally a little bit, you'll kind of get this particular pattern. Looks a little bit like a sideways S if you just tilt the S a little bit and kind of draw it. Looks like an S curve. So if I had to draw an S on top of that, here's what that would look like. So if I just draw a sideways S. So you can see where it kind of just trades into and kind of pulls in. And what we're gonna be looking at, um, and for this particular pattern, is both bullish, bullish, and bearish S curves. And we're going to do it on many different time frames. So you can kind of see how it is a fractalization of one of the one versus the other. And what we're going to look at a lot into in this particular video is we're going to really analyze, and I'll show you in just a moment. We're going to really analyze this portion right here. This is the part that is important because here's a few other facts about trading. It is very rare for you to buy at the low and get out at the high, at the exact high. Buy at the exact low and get out the exact high. It's very rare. High frequency traders would love to do this. Mutual funds would love to do this. Hedge funds would love to do this. It's just simply very rare. It can occur. That's why I can't put it's impossible or that will never happen. You can put almost never. Very similar to you winning something on the radio or winning a prize or a gift. A lot of people always say, oh, I've never won anything off the radio. Or if they go on a cruise and they you know, win something, they go, I never win anything. But they, it's not that they never win. They just win once every 17 years and they don't really remember the last time they won, so it's been a while. One of those type of nevers where it'll happen. I've certainly gotten in at the exact low of a move and I've gotten out the exact low of the move. I've never done it on the same trade. I can say that. That's never happened in my entire trading career where I got in at the exact low of a move and then got out of the exact high on the same trade. I've nailed it to, a, to the penny on a low, and I've also nailed to the penny on a high two different trades. Never done it on the same one, ever. The reason that I'm bringing that up is because this will help immensely with you learning your timing on your entries is because since that is so rare, you are 100% going to leave money on the table. That will happen all the time. So if you know that with a 100% degree of certainty, like there's no question, that's almost like an astrological, astrophysics guarantee. 
Like it is, it is there. It's gonna happen. You're going to leave money on the table. So since you know that, don't worry about it. And what we also know is you are 100% going to lose on some trade. On a trade, some trade, one trade, you're gonna lose at some point. Warren Buffett loss, people lose. You're gonna lose on a trade. So if you know this, and you know this, and you know this, your goal then is to get in and simply lose less money than you make. And this approach, pattern, and strategy will help you get in just a little bit lower. So here we go. Step one, identify, identify the trend. All right, that works. That's pretty much the steps with all the videos and of all technical analysis. That's usually gonna be your step one. Identify the trend. You wanna know within two seconds, bullish or bearish. So we're looking at this particular stock right now that just happens to be on the screen. For all those who are here in the live recording, uh, type in what trend is on your chart in front of you. Okay, TA, is that bullish, is that bearish, or is that a sideways trend? All right, everyone's gonna agree that that's bullish. Yep, it's an uptrend. So since we know that, identify the trend, play, play the S curve, step two, play the S curve, that goes with the trend. All right, that's step two. So we're doing a bullish S curve because the trend is bullish. All right, that makes sense. Now, here's where it gets fun. Step three, draw the S-curve. S-curve from where the trend initially began on the time frame that you are trading. We're gonna to have to talk about this one a little bit. So this is the one we're gonna to get to discuss. When you're drawing your S-curves, I'll kind of put this little note down here. Remember, I teach kids ages six, seven, and eight this stuff. If they can do it, you can do it. It's not hard. Trading is as simple as you want it to be. It's also as difficult as you want it to be. You can make it simple, you can make it hard. Here we go. Hand draw your S curve on your charting software. Hand draw it. The reason I say hand draw it is because you will get a natural flow. You will actually get your rhythm. I've studied only two years in college, long time ago, graphology, AKA handwriting analysis, something a lot of you don't know about me. I've only retained like 8% of what I used to learn. I was actually pretty good at it at one point. But handwriting is, they say, kind of links to your brain waves, like the way you write on an actual piece of paper, like with your physical hand. <laughs> Right now it's 2018, so if you're watching this 10 years from now, people are gonna say, paper? What's a pen? Anyway, hand draw your S-curve because you will get that natural flow. You'll actually get a natural rhythm of what you want the stock uh, to do. And secondly, where you probably should be buying it. You will get that rhythm. Now, a lot of you won't believe me, but I can assure you that this is a natural wave, right? The markets moves in waves. The markets are organic. Just like if I said, go to the ocean and draw me a perfect wave in the ocean. That might be a little bit hard to do if you're not an artist, but you get the picture is at some point there will be a wave that will come along that will look just like the one that you drew or almost identical to it because it's a natural element. The stock market is comprised of natural sentiment with both buyers and sellers. So this wave will be a natural wave. So you can just simply draw it. This is the, uh, the funny term, Mr. Squiggles. This is where Mr. Squiggles comes in. And Mr. Squiggles is me just drawing a natural regression of what I think it might do or it could do. And then from there, that'll be step four, is once we draw that, then you're going to trade it. And then it becomes that simple. So step three, draw the S-curve from where the trend initially began on the time frame that you're trading. So when we're talking about that, when I say initially began, what we could agree on is you can go back and look at a previous time the stock curved. 
it is really as easy as you think it is. A lot of you are going to go, there's no way it's going to be this simple. It is that simple. For example, ladies and gentlemen who are here live, is this an S-curve, yes or no? Is that an S-curve, yes or no? The answer is yes. Yep, you're all timing that in. Could you have bought somewhere around here? The answer is sure. Now, the takeaway that's important is that S-curve is its own curve. And then you have this one right here in black. That's its own separate curve. That's its own separate fractal. That's its own separate wave. That's like going to the ocean, playing, a, you know, if you're bodyboarding or boogie boarding or surfboarding, you get one wave. This is an entirely separate wave in the same ocean. So the water from the first wave will eventually become the water of a 15th wave or whatever at some juncture. But when you get two waves back to back, they're arguably two in, in separately and distinctively distinctive waves, if that makes any sense. So they're different of the same. So with that particular move, this right here would be its own curve, which means that this structure that we're getting right now, right here, would be an entirely separate curve. This is what my hand drew. I drew it with my mouse. I drew the S curve that it would pull back. Now what's interesting about this is a curve, an S curve, begins from the bottom of a previous curve to the top of the previous curve. And remember why I mentioned Fibonacci analysis comes into play? Usually it's at a Fib range. It's right between that 38 and that 61% levels of the previous retracement. What's cool is I can almost guarantee you that you will create those yourself. Because it is a nature thing. It's a natural thing. That's why Fibonacci's work is because they are a, they have something natural found in nature. So for example, if I ask people to draw a wave, I never really get a wave that looks like this. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's pretty rare. Most people naturally, if they begin something and they pull something back, they don't go lower than it previously started. It's a pretty rare event. Now, can that happen in the markets? Yes, yes it can. And that is what I refer to as a trap, right? A trap is when people get scared or you know, worried or frustrated. So this is one of my biggest takeaways of this entire course is if I see a natural S curve and then I see that natural S curve get taken out, it's such a good day trade or short term swing trade is almost, almost free money. What do I mean by that exactly? Here's an, here's an example. I'll do it with a different color and I'll do it on a different wave. So here's green. And let's say for example, right here, pretty common, pretty natural S curve. So we get this, we get this, and we get this. What if on just randomly on this day right here, the stock gaps down below the bottom of that perfectly formed S curve? Would people be very trapped? Yes or no? And the answer is yes, because what's happening is, think about that like a rogue wave in the ocean. It's not really supposed to occur. Now that doesn't mean it can't occur, just like a tornado or a hurricane or a volcano, we know they will happen for sure. It's unfortunate when they do, but people are trapped when it happens, but it's still part of nature. And I'm not gonna get too mystic on you like, oh, this is like a nature thing. It's not all about that, but it is something that will occur. Traps happen in nature. <laughs> They're called storms. And when something changes, when the environment shifts, you're going to get a change in everything. And then us as humans are going to have to protect ourselves in that environment. So if you get a natural S curve, it should not do this, right? It should do this. If you can find a curve where it pulls down nicely and everything looks good, phenomenal. Once that changes and gets disrupted, that's when a trap comes in and that's when a day trader can make a lot of money and also um, swing traders or whoever else. So if I come back to this particular wave, so this will be one S curve right here. The uh, second S curve will begin at the bottom of the curvature. So when you get this, this, and this, this begins the new wave. So from here to here, we start curving down, and then we begin the new wave. From here to here, 
and then come down, and it's just so on and so forth. So this will be a different color. So the reason that's important is because that's going to help you know what wave you're in. So right here, if we pull up, this is its own wave. All right, so this is its, sorry, I'm trying to draw my trackpad. This is its own wave, and now we're going to trade down and then do something like this. So could I simply say, based on that analysis, I'm going to take this trade bullish here, and I'm going to set my stop at the bottom of that curve, way down here. Could I do that? The answer is sure, I can do anything you want. How will we know if this will work? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. You don't, ever. Oh, but Jeremy, I want to. I want to have certainty that it will work. Well, if you want certainty, you can get it. You can say, I am 100% certain that this will move in a direction. You could say that out loud if you want to numerous times. You could say, I'm 100% certain this will move in a direction, but you don't know if you will be right. What I can say is the probabilities are in your favor. And if your time frame, time frame plus probabilities align, you have a better chance of making money. What do I mean by time frame? I brought this up a few times. In numerous videos, I talk about the time frame of a chart. Daily versus weekly versus monthly versus one hour versus 15 minute. If you take a daily chart, look, look at what we're looking at right now, April to September. If you took this S curve and you got in at, let's just say $40, okay, the only way, unless you, you believe in alternate parallel universes where you did something different. The only way to make money would have been buy there and hold all the way up until here. If you know another way other than progressing through the time horizon to accomplish that, let me know. But from April until mid-September, the only way to buy uh, a little bit lower than 40-ish and sell it around 72-ish is to be in that entire amount of time which is one, two, three, four, five and a half months. That's almost a half a year. Type in a seven if that is an eternity. I'm gonna type in a seven because that is a really, really long time for me and for most people. I'm not saying it's impossible and I'm not saying you can't make money with it. I'm just simply saying you have to know your time frame. If I go into something, you want to know how long you're gonna be in that. If you're taking something on the daily chart and you want to be in it for a while because you're, well, trading it off the daily chart, you're going to be in for a while. I'll just say that easily. Because if you're only getting 20 candles a month on a daily chart, 20 candles a month, that's all you're getting. Okay, so from April till mid-September, 20 daily candles every single month at best. That doesn't include holidays or anything else. 20 times 5 equals 100 candles. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this is a little bit of a mind blow for you, but this right here is a little bit more than 100 candles. Like 110 candles. All of those candles. You can count them if you want, but that's how many there are there. About 110. Isn't that pretty wild? A little bit more than that, but again, it's going to be approximate because you have every every day. And so if you want to go in and count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you're going to get pretty close to 110. That's just, I mean, there's four weeks in a month, most often, and then there are five trading days in a week, most often without holidays. So you're going to get about, you know, five months, about 100. Type in a six, if that's a little bit of a revelation. The reason I'm bringing that up is because most people only wait 20 or 30 candles on a daily chart to find out if they're right or not, but that's not enough time. Because if I go into a five minute chart, okay, if I look at a five minute time frame, and this is the beginning of the day right here, 
If I go into a five minute time frame on OKTA, the reason people like day trading so much is because you are getting seven and a half full hours of data. So you're gonna get seven and a half full hours of data every single day. And if you're trading on a five minute chart, right, because the, so, so 10, from 10 to four is six, six and a half, sorry. Six and a half hours of data every day. So that's how long the US market is open from 9.30 to 4 p.m. So six and a half hours times 60 minutes equals 390, okay? 390 divided by five. I believe that's how many five minute candles you're gonna get in a given day. Because you have, you know, for every 60 minutes, you have 12 five minute candles. So that's, that's the math right there. 12 times six and a half. So in a five, I mean, a, just a five minute window, you're getting so many, so much more data only waiting a day versus waiting five and a half months. So again, you have to really know and understand your time frame because if you are getting into a trade and you are doing it on a daily chart, it's going to take longer than you want. The market, this is a Jesse Livermore quote, the market is designed to fool most people most of the time. Type it in eight. Let me go ahead and type in an eight. But type in an eight, if you've been in a trade, you got bored with it because it didn't do what you wanted to do, you got out, only to see it go higher. Almost minutes afterwards. Why? Why does that happen? How did the market know? Did the market know? No, it did not. But what the market does know is how long on average most people will do something. Most people do the same things all the time. And when I say the market collectively knows, it's because the market is designed of people, most people, who do the same thing most of the time. So if you get into a trade, let's just say eight days, which is a Fibonacci number, right? Eight's a Fib number, or 13 days. That's a natural thing. Most people are usually pretty comfortable being in a trade eight to 13 days. But once you start getting into the higher FIB levels for whatever time frame it is that you're looking at, this, could all, this also works in years, but it works in five minute candles, works in one minute candles, works in 30 second candles, works in tick candles. It's just a natural law of human sentiment. And if you start stretching yourself, you start getting into a Fibonacci you know, eight plus 13 is 21, and then you get 34, and then you get 55, and then you get 89, and you start going through each one. I think it's the number previous added to each other, right? So once you start getting to a specific level, it's gonna go, oh man, most of the people here are starting to sell, they all get out, and then the trade continues higher, because that was a natural thing for it, to, for it to do. It was this natural design. So when you're looking for S-curves and when you're looking for a trade, you must know and recognize that the market is designed by other people from a majority to do something that you don't want to do anyway. So you have to, you need to, as a trader, fight through that first impulse. Whatever that first impulse might be, and try, try to get, try to get to the fifth or sixth impulse. <laughs> That's a good challenge for you. If you get into a trade and then you want to start selling, you've been in the trade a whole week. All right, try to fight that one. Build that muscle. That's how you get a good cardiovascular system working. Like if you're a runner, I can promise you anyone who's ran 10 miles had to run one mile first. So try to get past that first impulse, try to get past that first mile, so to speak, because as a trader, you need to fight that. 
and it will always be there, by the way. That's like saying no marathon runner ever gets tired. Okay, most marathon runners eventually gonna get tired, but they push through that. It doesn't really matter how much you train, at some level, you're, you will get tired. You'll need energy as a runner. So, tr so try to push through that first impulse. And most traders' impulse is eventually not buying unless they're certain that something's gonna play out. So a way to get a little more certainty is to define what pattern you want on what time frame. And when I say pattern, I do mean candle pattern. So a way to get a little more certainty is to define what candle pattern you want on a particular time frame. Because myself and many other phenomenal traders, um, you're very, again, rarely gonna get in the exact bottom. So it's very rare to catch this exact low. You might do it if you have a wick or something or you're in just that right time or the right, the right place, but most of us will probably get in here or here, but you certainly should not be getting in up here. That's just, that's a no-no. Right, that's what, that's what most traders did right here and then they got hosed. Right, they waited for this S-curve to come in and then they got wrecked. So, go, so I'm gonna go ahead and give me a stock really quick. I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna look at what S-curve, what it's doing right now and show whatever whatever it is. Um, all right, JD. So here's JD, and I'm gonna pull up the daily chart. This is what I'm first looking at uh, at this exact moment in time. Now, with an S curve, some S curves are gonna be more shallow than others. So for example, uh, there's a few right here on, on JD. So you're gonna have, you have this one, and I'm gonna draw it with a different color. Then you have this one, and I'm gonna draw the next one with a different color. And you're gonna have this one, and then we'll draw a different color. And then you have uh, this one, and I'll draw the next one with a different color, right here. And then you'll have this one, okay? So there's four or five different waves right there. Here's a tip, bearish S-curves are often more shallow meaning they don't and they uh, oftentimes do not give a big pullback. Now here's the question that some of you are asking, how would you have caught this top of that S curve or the top of this S curve right here? How would you have known to take that? Well, you are either um, a, using fibs. And we're going to look at a fib in just a moment. That doesn't mean that's going to work, but it means you can get close. B, using a moving average. C, guessing. D, pulling up a smaller time frame and planning it there or getting in there. Because remember, all S-curves are fractalization of another S-curve. Type in a 1 if you want to um, if you want to guess that there's an S-curve at the top of this candle, top of this candle, and the top of these candles, and the top of these candles. There 100% is. I can guarantee you. It's without question. It just doesn't matter. It matters not that it's there. It matters what time frame it's there. Because it will be there. So let me do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one of these, each A to D, and talk about how you would have known where the S-curve is going to pull back to, because bearish S-curves are often more shallow. So you're going to play those a little bit more um, aggressive, meaning it won't pull back quite as far. So I'll, I'll uh, pull these back over here. All right, I'll leave this up. So we're going to use fibs, moving averages, guessing, or pulling up a smaller time frame. That's what we're gonna kind of walk through each one of those. Now, you could use any of these. You could use all of these. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. What if you go through and you get a system where you find a FIB moving average, it also ma matches with what you guessed and you pull up a smaller time frame and all four of those work out. Will, you work, will it work on some trades? 
Yes, it will. Will it also not work sometimes? That is correct. Because then it does come down to the strategy at the same point. Like you still have to do the right strategy. You still have to do the right, you know, if you, if you sell calls, for example, or if you buy puts or you short the shares, you get into a bearer call spread, debit spread, that still matters. So let's go use fibs really quick. And we're gonna go, we're gonna have to go back in time because this wave is already structured and I'll, I'll ask someone else to give me another one. Uh, but here is where you would have had to say, okay, this is obviously a wave. This is, this is obviously a wave. Start here, end it here. So now you have a bullish candle. So we're gonna take the bullish candle and we're gonna go back to the top of this way, of this candle right here. That one to that one. Bull candle to bear candle. Now why use this candle right here? That's because that's the start of the most previous wave. Remember? So the S curves that are phenomenal ways to help you draw your fibs. I hope that's a big takeaway for a lot of you, but it's a really, really good way. Because you can go back and go, yeah, that's where that S curve started. That's the highest point of that. Then you can draw a fib there. So that now here's what's crazy. If you use this fib, here's the take, here's another takeaway. If you use this fib, that says to me that this the 0.618 level is 28.83. Are you going to short there? Yes or no? Like, what are you doing at that price? The way to use fibs is you have a fib and you go, okay, I'm going to short here. Bearish limit sell. Now, where do you place your stop? You can place your stop above all the other fib ranges if you want to, right? You can place them all the way the heck up here, but that could be your setup right there. Now, what if you say, I don't want to use that one. I want to use this one. Okay, fine. Or what if you use this one? That's also fine. So realistically, what your goal is, is to try to find whatever level it is that you're doing something off of and then do it off of that level. So the crazy thing with JD at this particular level, I actually don't know if it comes up to 2084. I, I, tr I truly don't. I do not remember. Um, but in this particular junction, what you're looking for is if the trade comes back, you have a few choices. Most traders will wait for the stock to trade up, trade down, and then they'll get in bearish here after it's already made its move. And that's because they want confirmation. They want to feel certain. They want to know for sure that the trade is going to work. Sorry, bruh. You're never going to know for sure anything in the market other than it's going to move one direction or another. So could you just simply set up this order to get in? You don't even have to be there. Days could go by and you set up the trade to get in bearish, set your stop. You have a $2 stop, 28.84 to 30.84, $2 stop. So we know how to determine our risk. And once we've determined the risk, right? Once we've used the risk, Come up with the amount of shares that you're selling or puts that you're buying or bear call spread or bear, whatever your strategy is and then go from there. So this would be a fib use. So if I go next candle, we're trading higher. Next candle, nice upper shadow. We're in bearish. Okay, so now that we're in bearish, will this trade work or not? I don't know. You never do. How long until you move your stop? I don't know. Depends on your time frame. How long do you want to be in the trade before you got in? Is it a bill paying trade? Because bills come every 30 days, at least they do for me. Right? Every time I pay an insurance bill or electric or water or heating and gas or I want to go buy some drinks or some food or whatever, it comes around every 30 days. So that's going to have to be a pretty quick trade for me. So we would go forward and go, all right, um, we, we now know that this trade would have worked because this is where you're at. Just three days later, you're up nice on the trade, about an hour and a half. One risk, you know, so you're up, right now it's at 25.65, so you're up almost $3. If your risk was two, you're up three, it's a good trade. Do you get out now? How long do you hold? All of those things are gonna help you, right, with your timing, with your S-curve, because you know you've only been in the trade three days and you get an S curve like this, and then it rolls lower. 
which is probably what's going to happen. Lee says, depending on the experience, the S-curve may start with a different candle, right? It definitely can. Usually, um, you can, the good news is you can measure any candle that you want because trading is more art than science. But it is oftentimes, Lee, the, the candle that ends and begins the newest wave. So for JD, if I'm going to say which candle created the S-curve to cause it to roll over, you're going to have to pick either the red one, uh, the blue one, the fuchsia one. Oh, that's not fuchsia, that's blue again. Where's fuchsia? Is this fuchsia? The fuchsia one or uh, the, the black line. So let me put the black line on here. So here's the black line. So you're going to have to use one of those four, I would argue. Could you do another one? Maybe, but that doesn't mean that you're wrong, by the way. Just because you do something different than what I do, <laughs> that by no means says you're wrong, but you do have to have a reason and a rationale as to why you chose that candle. And as long as you have that reason and rationale, then that's really fine. Type in a six if that was a really cool takeaway with the fibs. Now, I know I make it look easy. This strategy works, just not all the time. I say that with everything. I, there's, there's no end to how many strategies I can teach you. What is really cool about this though, what is very cool, is the S-curve is a principle of nature. It works because nature works. That's a big takeaway. It's a natural rhythm. Natural rhythm of rotation. Waves appear all around us. Light waves, sound waves, waves are natural. And you, we have to know that. So, that was that setup. Now, what was the other one? You all remember? What was the other thing that you could use to find an S-curve? And you don't have to use fibs at all. Throw fibs out the window. Don't care. Doesn't matter. They are irrelevant. What else do you use? You could use a moving average. All right. Now, which moving average? <laughs> well, again, you get to pick when you do a moving average, time frame um, and average. Here's a tip. They all work, just not all the time. So what if you do the 100 SMA on a one minute chart? Okay, sure, that moving average will work sometimes, just not all the time. What if you use a 10 EMA on a daily? Or the 50 EMA on an hourly? What if the hourly is extended hours versus non-extended hours? They all work, just not all the time. I know, that's, I know you might get annoyed by me saying that, but it's really a philosophy you have to live by. You go, okay, I don't really care. If you're actively trading, everything works just all the time. So what if I delete the fibs and go, whatever, don't care about fibs, just leaving that alone. And then I come over here and I do moving averages. And I use the 10 EMA. What if, if I'm looking at doing an S curve, because I can tell you that the 10 will work pretty well. Does the eight work pretty well? Yep, it does. Does the 20 work? It does. Does the 13 work? Does the 12 work? It does. For this strategy, I can say um, on a bigger time frame, the smaller averages uh, will work better for this approach. For shorter term trade length. All right. So on a bigger time frame, so let's define bigger time frame. And my definition of that is going to be three hours or higher. So three hour candles or up is a bigger time frame. How would I define smaller averages? I would define those as eight to 21 EMA. And how would I define shorter term trade length? Uh, four months or less. All right. So if I'm doing a bigger time frame, 
We know the answer to that. Again, this is all my opinion regarding trading. It's a good opinion, but it is still an opinion. Because the way I quantify bigger, I mean, <laughs> that's up to interpretation. <laughs> so on a bigger time frame, then you have a smaller average. What is big? What is small? What is short term? What is long term? You get to decide those answers. You get to pick those answers. Those are your answers. This is my answers. So you'll notice the red line. What if I just went short at the red line? That was it. Boop. I said, all right, I'm going to go short at the red line. Pretty simple strategy, wouldn't you say? Where would the stop go? All right, stop could go above another moving average. So it could go above the 20 EMA. So if I take the 20 EMA off, there's the 20. Is that a pretty simplistic plan? Short at the 10, and then when you're in a nice trend, nice bearish trend, and you're doing an S curve, short at the 10, place your stop of the 20. Does that work? Yeah, it works until it you know, doesn't work anymore. What about, all right, Jeremy, I'm just gonna buy, I'm just gonna do it off the 20. Okay, so if you turn the 20 off, oops, I turned the 10 off. If you do it off the 10, um, take the 10 and just did the 20. So you short off the 20 and then put your stop above the 50. Okay, so you would have maybe gotten something there, potentially, uh, even though this was a very, very, very good support. So once that support broke down, there was no time that's hit the 20, at least not yet. So you're gonna wait a little bit if you're doing the 20 on the daily. That's a whole month. Now, <clears throat> um, the other one was just guessing, right? The other one that I wrote down. So you'll notice that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what type of gap is this right here? Black candle gapping down. Lee said, is there an average to set up with stop out? Yep, 10 and 20 works really well. Short off the 10, stop above the 20. So you have a black candle gapping down. That is a retest gap. Exactly. Retest gap. Very easy. Black candle gapping down. So could you just have said, all right, um, since it's a retest gap, you know, most, most retest gaps retest. So I'm just going to get in somewhere in the middle of this gap. And I'm going to set my stop somewhere up there. Could you have done that approach? Where it's not really a guess, but there's no moving average. There's no Fibonacci. You just go, all right, I'm just going to short it somewhere in this gap. And Put a stop above and maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't. Yep, you sure could do that. I know a lot of traders that do that and it works pretty well. I do that pretty often. Because at some point you'll just know that there's a fib there. <laughs> you can actually do the Fibonacci work, but you it will be there. There will be a fib there at some point. And then D, D was go into a smaller time frame and then look for a, a, a roll over there. <clears throat> so here's a smaller time frame. This is the hourly chart. And let me just hide all my drawings for a second because I have a lot of analysis on JD. So we have a smaller time frame on JD.cap. You have a white candle gapping up, so you know it's a retest gap. White candle gapping up, so retest gap. Trades down, fills the gap, S curves over. And when you start looking at this pattern, you, you can see that it's filled the gap. You can see that it's starting to S curve and roll over. You get in um, here, set your stop around here. There's also moving averages you would pull up on this. Here's the hourly chart. And you can see here's getting below all the moving averages right around here. So once it does this, right, once it breaks this S curve and trades in, if you wanted to get in there, again, below the low of that bullish candle with a stop above all the moving averages. That could work. Or even better, you know, white candle gapping up. If you knew it was coming into a fib and you knew it was coming into a moving average, you could have said, okay, this is a pretty strong bullish white candle right here. It should take out that candle. So if it does, I'm gonna get in below that low and set a stop above that high. Something like that, get a little bit of wiggle room. Because you know it's at a location at which it should roll over. Doesn't mean it will. So if I'm at a location, this is how you can add a little bit more certainty. You start adding certainty by waiting on the candle that you want. And if you are bullish, you want bears to be trapped. And if you are bearish, 
You want bulls to be trapped. That just means the trade will work better. So if you want to add a little bit more certainty and you know that on a daily fractal, this is potentially going to be an S curve. This is where the S curve should have happened. And on the hourly chart, you zoom in and leave this up here. And on the hourly chart, you zoom in and you notice that this is a bullish S curve. This is a bullish S curve. This is a bullish S curve. And then it pops. You're like, okay, this looks pretty good. Theoretically, on a bullish hourly fractal, it should do this, this, and this. Am I right? That's what it should do on the hourly. So now you have an hourly bullish fractal and a bearish daily fractal. Which one's going to win? Usually the bigger time frame will win out. Because I had already gone through, already determined that the trend was bearish on JD. So if you're looking at a bearish trend, then you're going to be looking for that bearish play. So you're going to wait for right here, the bullish S curve to break down. That's that fractalization where it does this, it does this, and it was supposed to bounce because that is the natural curve. You can almost go in there with your finger and see that, that, that that's a natural curve up there. You do this, this, and this, like that's, we can see that, like, yeah, that's natural. Type in a one if you can see that with your eyes. Like, yep, yeah, that's what it should have done. But it didn't. And since it didn't, people got trapped. And that's okay. But in so knowing, you'd have the ability to play that rotation. Now, what's really great is this happens, like I mentioned, on all time frames. For my day traders, the S curve is one of the best patterns out there. I love the S curve when I'm day trading. So this one was one on JD.com. They could have made you a pretty, a pretty decent amount of money. So without even looking at the extended hours, I'll show those in a moment, type in a seven if you would agree that that is right there, a bearish S curve. That's it. That's, that's the bearish S curve right there. Now, how would you have known to get in bearish right there? Uh, the answer is you probably wouldn't. Not with this particular time frame. But you could have used candles to add a little bit more certainty to your trade. And this candle right here, pretty good bullish candle. So the low of these two candles is a tweezer bottom. So what do you, what do you all think? On a tweezer bottom, that means that someone is trying to go long down there. Type in a six if you agree. Someone's trying to go long on that tweezer bottom. So if someone's going long on a tweezer bottom and your entry is going to be right below the low of that tweezer bottom, and your stop's going to be above that bearish candle high, something like that. And if that was your setup, right, you're waiting for the S-curve to come in, come out, and break down. Again, you didn't get it at the very top of the S-curve, but you got close to the, that, that curvature of the motion. We know that we're never going to get in the very top, and we're never going to get in the very bottom, at least very rarely. So if I'm playing an S-curve, I'm really totally fine. Obviously, the closer I get to that little pinnacle, the better, but... That's absolutely okay. Now, if you miss the trade, check it out. You get another S curve into the 10. This is a low of the day retest, LOD. Low of the day breakdown. Here's your retest right there. And look at it, it comes into the 10 EMA on a three minute chart. That's where you could have been shorting with a stop above the 20, somewhere up here. And then it rolled over. And you get another S curve, then it rolls over. Here's another big takeaway with S curves, especially on day trading uh, and on swings, three S curves is about as much as you'll get before a longer retracement. Uh, long is not the right word, bigger consolidation. So it doesn't mean that it can't go lower after that, but it means after you get those three, you guys ready for a really big mind blow? Here's like, this is like the culmination of almost the entire thing. On an Elliott wave approach, boom, 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 boom. An Elliott wave is an S curve, ladies and gentlemen. It's just an ugly one. Low number one, low number two, Low number three. Goosebumps, ladies and gentlemen. 
Now it all comes full circle. And only 80% of the people are gonna actually watch this video all the way through. I'll get a lot of comments that it took too long to get to this point. But I do that intentionally. <laughs> I could easily do that earlier. But that's when that third low comes in. So if you know that you have a third low that's coming in, I'm not saying you could exit all of it there, but what if you did exit all of it there? Is that a problem? No. Are you gonna leave money on the table if it keeps going lower? Yep, because you're guaranteed to do that anyway. Could you exit some of your position at the third low or if you're going bullish, a third high? Could you exit some here and lock in some profits? Absolutely. Could you exit everything and lock in all of your profits? Absolutely. Are you gonna potentially leave money on the table? Yes, you will. You're, that's a guarantee anyway, so don't really stress about that. So when I, when I start seeing three on whatever time frame, whatever pattern, um, normally they're bigger patterns. So on day trading, a three and a five minute candle are pretty massive. 15 is as high as I go actually trading an intraday time frame. Actually like getting in and getting out, 15 is as high as I'll go. Um, I don't even get in on the 15. I do my analysis on the 15 and I'll get in on a five or lower. So this particular strategy, this particular approach is what helps a lot of traders with their timing. So someone go ahead and throw another stock at me. We've got a few more minutes to go. And I want to kind of bring this again full circle. Lee says, if the stock's in a downtrend, you care if it approaches support. Absolutely. Yep, yeah, but it has to be a really strong support. It has to be a very strong support. So Bill says, U.S. Steel. So I'm going to pull up U.S. Steel and I'm going to go to a daily chart, which is a pretty common chart. And what's the trend on U.S. Steel? What is the trend? So the trend is sideways to bearish, sideways to bearish. It's like, it's not an obvious downtrend. I mean, it was just a few months ago at 46, now it's at 29. So a little sideways. And again, if you don't test that, bring up the weekly. What is the weekly? Sideways to bearish. Yeah, it's still sideways to bearish. So a sideways trend doesn't mean you're not going to make money in it. There's plenty of S curves to be found. But if a stock's going sideways, how long do you think you should be in that trade? Not very long. Yeah, because it's going <laughs> it's going sideways. So if I'm looking at US Steel and I'm coming over here to a daily chart, what I see is it has just made an S curve and it's made a new low. Boom, S curve, profit. And what was this candle right here, my friends? This candle was noobs getting in bearish. And if you were playing the S curve, that was you up here getting out of your bearish position because it made that new low. Why do you think waves work that way? Why do you think when stocks make new highs that they often will sell off again? Because when they make new highs, that's when people are getting out for a profit. All right? So for example, right here, small S curve makes a new high, people sell. Pulls back. 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 It's not, it's not shocking. Happens very frequently. Now, the cool part is, what if you had gotten in right here? Say, so, okay, Newsom, all of this works out well. What if you got in right there? My answer would have been, you'd have gotten stopped out four or five days later. You did have a possibility to make some money on at some level, but the thing is, if you can go back and look at a trade and say, I should have gotten in here, 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 now I'll get in, usually a bad place to get in. The best trades are usually the, usually the most obvious. So now, right, as Bill mentioned, so this is the daily chart, so now you're going to hop into an hourly. So if you're trading an hourly chart, what's the hourly doing? Bullish or bearish? A little bit more bullish. Yep, a little bit more bullish. So we have to figure out if, a, if the stock is going sideways on a big picture time frame and it's going a little bit bearish 
to sideways on a daily time frame and a little bit bullish on an hourly time frame, you have three opposing forces. You have bulls, you have sideways, and you have bears. So this tells me there are better trades out there. But since you're making, here's a bullish S curve, here's a bullish S curve, uh, here's a little bit of a bullish S curve, and now we're making another one. That's already three that I can spot. So I'm gonna wait for it to chop around a little bit and then see if I wanna play it on a next bigger rotational bullish S curve, something that would look like this. Now, what if it trades like this and then ends up breaking down? Then you could go bearish because that's the daily trend anyway. The thing is you have to allow yourself to draw these patterns and really see if you can find and determine a trend that is pretty obvious. And once you get about three, you're gonna get that time. Again, I can, I can see one, even if I discount this one, that's two, and then this is three. So we've made a strong move. We've made three moves. So at this level, I'm like, well, I'm not really interested. What's another good stock? I'll pull that one up as well. What's another good stock? Uh, Facebook, says Frank. Okay, so here's FB. So Facebook, I'm gonna hop over here to the daily chart. And what's really fun about Facebook is this is when the initial wave was. And remember how I drew that wave that this is now getting above that high? This is when people started getting trapped. So there's some bulls and some bears, all both in this area that were trapped. Um, it, you know, it eventually takes out this really strong bullish candle. And ever since then, Facebook's have been in a normal flow but it took out that really big bullish candle, so bam, here's your S-curve right here, bam, here's your S-curve right here, bam. So now we're trading to some lows. So if this support should hold, most likely will bounce and trade back up into the moving averages, and then you get to see, because right now, a little bit of a bearish trend. But if we zoom out just a little bit, it's still bearish, to, it's still a little sideways as well. So, right, here's the sideways trend, still a little sideways. So, sideways to bearish a little bit, kind of like US Steel. Now, if I go to a weekly chart, hop over to a weekly, the weekly is nice bullish trend. We are below the moving averages right now, unquestionable, but for, I mean, overall, this is a good bullish trend. So, you have big bullish trend, a little sideways on the daily, and a little bit bearish on the short term. So if I'm going to go bearish, I need to close below support because that's what Lee was asking just a moment ago. If you're into a strong support, what do you do? So right now on Facebook, very strong support. We're at a support in a buy low, sell high scenario. So the question will be very simply, could you go bullish right here with the stop loss a little bit lower? The answer is sure. Could you go bullish here and then if it closes, below this, this key support, could you then exit your bullish position and get in bearish? The answer is yes, you could. What if instead you want to hop into an hourly time frame? Okay, here's the hourly. And again, we can see a really nice S curve right here on an hourly. So this hourly move right here looks very similar to JD. They usually do where you'll get a few bullish S curves. So there's one, here's one, here's one. And then it breaks down. So for me, to start really playing Facebook bullish, since you have so many different uh, signals, I'm gonna be looking for this to break out, S curve down, and then continue higher. And then if it closes below 159.70, since this is a support, that's when I'll go, okay, I'm going to continue being a little bit more bearish than bullish. But what if you start zooming in? What if you really, really, really get into like a three-minute chart again? And you get into a three-minute, we can see right here that we have made some bullish S-curves. Here's one. Here's one. All right, big move. And you got to, you know, again, you made that new high. This one, all the newbies buy. Then have that nice big drop. So we can see this going sideways, right? That, that's why you want to figure out what is the trend, what is the trend doing? So if I'm playing an S-curve, if I'm helping my timing, I'm gonna let it break out above here, and then what am I doing? 
Am I, am I taking this break out? Very rarely. The only time I'm taking this break out is if that looks like the beginning of an S curve, right? Where you had this consolidation, a rest, a sideways move, a chop for a while. Otherwise, if Facebook did just pop out of here and make that bullish move, then I would, as Lee mentioned in the chat pane, I would buy the retest. I would buy that S curve. I would set up an entry to get in here with a stop below here. Would that trade work? I don't know. But this really, this approach is all about buying the dip. It is all about buying the retracement. It's not about getting in as high as you possibly can and chasing the trade. You want to know and ask yourself the big question of, am I getting in at the right time? Am I chasing the trade or do I feel like I have the ability to buy the dip? And the key is most, most usually you will get those dips. Ken says, what would you look, what would you look for to say these S's are going to flip? This is Marvel Technology, MRVL. So MRVL, I pull up Marvel because I am, I am bullish on this one at the present moment. Um, so I'm looking at this on a weekly chart. Now when I first, when I first did the trade, what I was looking for is big picture, bullish, tons of trends, and I'm looking for this to actually be the S curve. This is me playing the dip. I'm looking for this to be an S curve. To buy low, sell high, it's pulled back into a gap. It's at the 100 simple on a weekly. I have three or four things that are gonna help me with that overall trend. If I do a fib and draw this fib to this fib, it's gonna be about halfway. If I do this fib to this fib, it's gonna be about a 30%. So there's a lot of fibs. So there's a moving average there. There's a fib level there. Um, and then if I zoom into the daily chart, right, here's the daily. You do have uh, a bearish S curve that Ken's talking about right here. So here's the bearish S curve right there. There's the breakdown. So the question will become, is this a bearish S curve? Will we continue lower? Or will this fractalization of the big weekly picture that I just talked about and maybe this daily picture take over? And those are the parts, those are the answers, or sorry, those are the questions, the answers you don't know. But if I can get numerous things that tell me, yep, yeah, this is a good level to be buying, you have a FIB helping you here, you have a moving average helping you here, you have volume helping you here. If I have things that go, yeah, you have rationale and reasons to take this trade. Because remember, there are countless trades that you can take. Even if you had all the money in the world, you, re you really and financially could not take every trade out there that you wanted to anyway unless you were doing it like with a dollar or something. So you will get to a level where you, you most frequently never know what it's going to do, but it can help you with your timing to know should you be getting in where you're getting in now, or should you wait for that retest, wait for that pullback? Because if I zoom into an hourly chart, right here's an hourly, and I just hide all my drawings, this hourly chart, we could be right now S curving on an hourly where you had one, two, maybe. Maybe. I don't I don't know. We'll find out in another two or three days. Oh that I can almost guarantee you on Marvel. So again on MU, if I'm looking at big, big trends, if I want to zoom out to a weekly chart, I go to the weekly chart and I go, what's the overall trend doing? So here's the weekly, and look at this little nice S-curve right here, nice S-curve right here, nice S-curve right here, nice S-curve right here. Oh, stops working. Okay, once the S-curve stops working, on a, especially at a big level, we're no longer making higher highs and higher lows, that's when things start to change a little bit. The trend starts shaping up, the trend starts going a little bit different. You start becoming a lot more patient, you're playing things in different perspectives. Because again, naturally, that's how head and shoulders get formed, right? Boom, and then it does this, and it doesn't quite make it, and it makes that lower high. It changes the structure of the trend. It changes everything, and that's where you get that head and shoulders neckline. That's why it gets changed. So if you're saying, okay, look at this, big breakdown. I agree, and since then, we have gone lower. 
So if I come over here to a daily chart on Micron, once all of this starts changing, right, this was, I, I thought, a beautiful move on MU. This, this pullback right here, that was a beautiful one. Um, this one was also quite pretty right here. And you can see you could have made some money, depending on your time frame, on both of those trades. But where we are at this exact moment on MU, once we took out this low, right, once you take out that support, that's when things go, all right, this is getting interesting. Things are changing a little bit. And once you know that, once you can go in and look at the lower lows and lower highs, right? Like it's like a picture of a painting. If you take a, mic, uh, a magnifying glass and zoom in to a three to five inch piece of that painting, you're gonna see different colors and you're gonna see different approaches and different images. And then if you take all the way a 12 foot step back and you view the entire painting, you're gonna see a whole different image. Remember, give yourself permission and time when you're doing your charts to be an artist, to get that big picture view, to be able to zoom into these smaller picture views and get an idea of what it is it you want it to do. If I'm going back to Micron on a weekly, I actually think that this is a good place to buy because you're still S-curving. Right? If I do a big picture S curve, it's like, yeah, this, this is still natural. So down throughout here on a big picture, but this is a weekly chart. So how many weeks do you think it might take for MU to do something? If I looked at a daily example and I said 110 is about five and a half months, 110 weeks is two years, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not saying it's going to take Micron two years, but I think that makes actually a lot of sense. What do you guys think? Type in a seven. Could MU chop around in this in this zone for the next two years? I'd have to say it's entirely possible. Will that occur? I don't know. I wish I knew the future, but I am. This is this makes a lot of sense to me. That it does this. It had a beautiful move over the last two years. It pulls back, and we chop around in here for for a quite a period of time, year and a half, two years. Why does that make sense to me? I mean, that's just the natural ebb and flow of the market. Nothing goes up forever, just straight up. So if I look at MU, look at this trend. I mean, 2016, just crushing it. Also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one good S curve, two good S curves, three good S curves, new high consolidation for a while. Pretty amazing stuff. And ready for this? One last little mind blow on MU. I know it's gonna be a little hard to see, but uh, here's one, two, three. So you have a bullish consolidation gonna be happening and you have a bearish consolidation happening a la carte. MU's gonna chop around for a while. Now that is cool. That is really, really cool wave structure. And when you're in a trade like this on MU, exact same situation, that's why head and shoulders work, and that's why it's insanely difficult to call the top of the market. But if I'm looking at something like this, and again, this is back in 2015 on MU, and I can see, right, you got a little bit of an S curve here, you got a little bit of an S curve here, got a bigger S curve here, and it just keeps on going. And you have a much deeper S curve, and you got this big other move. Am I selling everything at 36? Probably not. But what I can do is I can look at and say, wow, look how far this, look how far this trend's gone. 600% growth in two years. 600%. Should you be exiting? Should you be buying there? Should you be cautious? Yeah. The, the, yes to all of those. You should be buying there. But you should also be cautious and you should also know it's moved up 600%. So be a little patient on your expectations. Be rigid on your rules and flexible on your expectations. Because you would have known within about a month, oh, this trade's not working anymore. I'm down. That's why it's important to cut your, you know, cut your losers. Because if something like that happened and you bought at 36 and you didn't get out till down here. But where do you know it was a bear trend really starting to form? You really didn't know until down here. This is when the trend was confirmed changing. That's when the trend was confirmed from bullish to sideways or sideways to bearish. That's when you knew. Simple as that. And I, I'd love to tell you that, yeah, I mean, you could have known for sure to get out there at 36. 
There's gonna be a lot of signals that could have told you. I believe that there was a divergence up there on, on that at that point. So let me just pull up uh, MACD, MACD. Um, yep, so you get a divergence right here. Very clear divergence at 36. So I'm not saying you shouldn't have bought up there, but what I am saying is if you did buy up there, you could at least protect yourself, covered calls, protective puts, stop losses. But it's much, much easier to get a solid, amazing trend after it trades sideways for a while and consolidates and then it breaks out than you know, getting into the very, very top of a trend, right? Just like Apple, Apple has some of the best S-curves in the game. Look at these S-curves on Apple. I mean, look how massive these things are. All right, this is 2008, big old S-curve, big giant pullback. S curve, S curve, S curve, S curve, ginormous. And so this pullback right here is a fractalization of a massive S curve, <laughs> right? So yeah, it would've been. It's pretty sucky when you're losing 40% from here to here. But if you know that, hey, this just made a new all-time high. Look at this really nice S curve. This is not the time to buy. I mean, this pattern right here. This. This pattern is the point of this video, my friends, is it's so simple to buy here. It's so hard to buy down here. Guess where you should be buying? Lower. Because by the time the move has been made, it's too obvious, it's too late. Here's a perfect example. Okay, that, that S curve right there on Apple was almost the exact same pattern as this one. Almost, I mean, pennies similar. Pennies, and then you had this crazy consolidation, this massive pullback. So, right, so when it makes that new all time high, could you be selling there rather than buying? And the answer is yes, but you gotta get in at the right time. If you buy at the breakout, you are that person, you're gonna continue to be that person that just always gets in, and right when you get in, the trade goes against you. Most of the trades are gonna feel kind of obvious. If it feels super simple, super obvious, give it a little bit more time. Wait another day or two, or hour or two, or five or 10 minutes. You wanna get in to that window of, if you're not thinking about it, and you see it, and you trade it, you don't question yourself. Not that you're confident, but you just see the pattern, you set it up, and then you flow. Mel Robbins says we have five seconds to make a decision before Check this out, our brain tries to protect us. I'll do two more minutes and I'll, I'll shut her down. We have five seconds to make a decision before our brain tries to protect us. We are built for survival, my friends. That's what your brain is built for, flight or flight. You are built to survive, you're not built to thrive. Your body is built to survive. It can survive in all kinds of conditions. So if you're thinking about a trade longer than five seconds, I'm not saying the analysis, like, like a strategy. You could be thinking through the strategy for a while, but once that five second window passes and you're still trying to figure out, is this the right entry? Is this the right stop? Where should I be playing it? Your brain's gonna start talking you out of it. You're gonna get analysis paralysis or death by analysis, or you're gonna think about it too long and you're gonna wait longer and then you're gonna get in and it's just too late. Every single five seconds, I mean, that, that's not even in trading, that's in everything. After five seconds, your brain goes, no, 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 no. I don't want to lose money because if I don't have money, then I don't have a home. If I don't have a home, then I don't have shelter. If I don't have shelter, I'm not going to survive. It's built around survival. Got to survive. And your brain's going to try to protect you. It's going to be your number one worst enemy in trading. That's why most trades are going to be the, the best trades, are going to be the most uncomfortable. You're either getting in at a price that you don't want to get in at or you're holding longer than you want to hold. The name of the game is a beautiful blend of patience and aggression. Do I have any questions for those traders who are here live before we wrap it up? I hope that was beneficial. It's about a good hour and 20 minutes, which is a really good amount of time for any kind of like introductory uh, concept, something that's a little bit newer. And I, I personally um, can expound on these concepts so much more I could talk about this one individual concept for like 40 hours straight probably because it's something that really will ratify and revolutionize your trading 
It just comes down to you simply, simply understanding where it is that you want to do something and why. Uh, and then pulling that trigger and making it happen. Marion says, awesome. Lisa, thank you so much. It's good. And my boy Matt says, great video. All right, team. Well, I appreciate all of your kind words. Thank you so much for your excellence and exceptionalism, professionalism, and for helping me enrich lives. I will see you all later. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button, post any comments that you have, email me, jeremy at My mission is to enrich lives and I want to help people learn how to properly and safely and profitably trade the stock market. Have a wonderful day, night, week, year, wherever you are in the world. Until next time, love life, live life and trade it.